Hello, it's me again. So we had already covered the basic of this approach on the first video, right? What did we talk about again in the first part? Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So we talked about the definition of inquiry-based learning. Hmm? I hope you didn't forget. And then the four models of inquiry, we have the structured, controlled, guided, and free inquiry. I also hope you didn't forget how different they are from each other. Next, we had the cycle of inquiry. So we had the first step to ask. Next is create. Create from the information. I oh, know, sorry, investigate. Third step is to create. Fourth step is to discuss. And fifth step is to conclude. Okay, that's a cycle of inquiry. And the last topic was the eight types of questions. Right, okay. I hope you were able to recall correctly. All right, and on this second part, we will encounter the rest of the topics. So from the teacher's and learner's role in this approach, then both the good and challenges or bad sides of this approach, then we will finally conclude. So bear with me until the end. Also, our objectives this time, okay, are to understand the role of the teacher and the learners in an inquiry-based classroom. And also realize the benefits and challenges related to this approach. Ready? All right then. The next thing on our list, as you saw earlier, is the facilitators and learners' roles in an inquiry-based classroom. Anyway, what does facilitate mean? Mm -hmm. The teacher as a facilitator. So what does facilitate mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. It means, it means assist. Okay. So the teacher as an assistant to an inquiry-based classroom. That is the first thing that we're going to look at. Shall we? Then, mm -hmm. okay, first, as a facilitator in an inquiry-based classroom, the teacher's first role is to reflect on the purpose and make plans for inquiry learning. Okay, reflect on the purpose or the goal. Here we are again with the goal, okay? And make plans for inquiry learning. Simply put, the teacher as a facilitator is tasked to set the goals and steps on how the inquiry should go about. Okay, that's the very first role of the teacher as a facilitator. Next, facilitate classroom learning. Of course, after setting the goals and steps to be done during the inquiry activity, the so next thing to do is to make it happen, right? Okay, so facilitate classroom learning. That is the next role of a teacher in an inquiry-based classroom. Third is to serve primarily as a resource for the students. Well, not really the only resource, but the main resource. The teacher should see to it that he or she is available to help out the students with any snags or problems during the activity. Also, guide the students through the learning process. I think this is a given, is it not? Like the third role, one of the teacher's responsibility is to be there every step of the way for the students, right? Okay, we don't need an absentee teacher in an inquiry-based classroom. Next role, 
establish parameters for learning objectives, and then allow students to direct their own learning. Establish parameters. What are parameters here? What does it mean by parameters? Or, in other words, it is also the teacher's role as a facilitator to set rules. Parameters are rules. Okay? To set rules following the objectives and trust the learners to be able to follow those rules and do their tasks properly. Okay? That's setting parameters and allowing their, uh, the learners to go about their own learning. Sixth rule. A cool learner with the students as they engage with real-world questions. Cool learner. Sounds strange, right? Because the teacher is the one who is expected to be more knowledgeable about the stuff or about some stuff compared to the learners. Mm -hmm. But why cool learner? Okay. In an inquiry-based classroom, everybody, including the teacher, is expected to participate in the process. It might be a little pretentious since the teacher is supposed to be familiar with the steps and perhaps the information or content, right? But it is another way to teach the learners how an inquiry task is done. Okay? So the teacher should be involved with the process as well in the task. You have more. And besides, the teacher cannot possibly know all things out there, right? Mm -hmm. Number seven, provoke additional inquiry of the questions presented by the student or students. The last role of the teacher as a facilitator is to persuade more of the student's ideas when they present their work to him or her. Okay, so remember it's an inquiry. So perhaps everything will be inquired upon, right? Will be questioned because that's the nature of the approach, right? So as we can see, the teacher as a facilitator, okay, her or his role is to be able to set up the inquiry learning and guide the learners through the process of the task. Can you follow so far? Good. Moving on to the learner's role. What do you think are the learner's responsibilities in an inquiry classroom? Since we've already talked about the teacher's role as a facilitator, how about the learner's role? Or roles, rather. First one is to view themselves as learners in the process of learning. Right, so that simply defines a learner's behavior, right? Or a learner's role in the classroom, no matter if it's inquiry-based or not. A learner is somebody who is set to learn. Okay, that's the first rule. Second, Raise questions, propose explanations, and use observations. These are very essential skills that an inquiry-based classroom could help the students in having, if they don't have the skill, or refining, if they already have it. Okay? So, raise questions, propose explanations, and use observations. Very important skills. Third, plan and carry out learning activities. Learners are expected to follow the procedures of the task. Okay, plan and carry out learning activities. Fourth, communicate using a variety of methods that the teacher has provided or the learners have chosen their own. Okay, if you can remember and the first part, we have the models of inquiry. Again, we have been mentioning it a lot. Okay, so the methods could be provided by the teacher or chosen by the students or learners, right? 
depending on, depending on the model. Fifth, critic their learning practice. Why should the students do this? Why the learners, not the teacher? Well, it is also important if the learners could manage their learning on their own. That would suggest that, among other skills, they should be able to reflect on their own strategies and be able to improve on things they need to. All right, perhaps you've heard about metacognitive skills. Okay, sixth, direct their own learning within the parameters set by the facilitator. So in a free model of inquiry, they are given a freedom, right? To choose the questions, resources, methods, and how they would present their output. However, okay, they are given freedom to explore the question and the resources, but they should follow the rules set for the activity. Okay, so they shouldn't do as they please. Okay, they should have boundaries. Lastly, work in groups and learn from each other. For some, this could be hard because they would prefer working alone, right? And some learners have a hard time accepting others' opinions. Mm -hmm. Okay, but however diverse they are, with a bit of luck, they would be able to get along share insights, and be able to in acquire information from each other. There you go for the learner's role in an inquiry-based classroom. So if a facilitator's job is to guide the learners in the process, we can see that there is more to being a learner in an inquiry-based classroom. In an inquiry-based classroom, learners are not just puppets, who follow the process, they should also be able to think on their own, albeit following established process. Again, learners are not just puppets who follow the process. Okay, they should also be able to think on their own, albeit or even if, although, following established process and rules. All right, are you still with me? Bear with me for a little longer. I promise this would be the last part of this lecture and I'll make it quick. I would want us to summarize on this topic by looking at both the benefits and challenges of this approach. If you're ready, then let's get on with it. Okay, so the first, Benefit is that it reinforces curriculum content. Inquiry-based activities are good ways to strengthen your content because there could be broader discussion and it can also encourage deeper analysis on the information you present. All right? Okay, it's not just simply accepting what's in the book. But in an inquiry-based classroom, you are given freedom, okay? you are given the right to question the content. Okay. Second, it warms up the brain for learning. We do not agree with this. I think you would agree it's true, right? By asking a question first before knowing the information, you get your brain into gear, right? It jump starts the brain to learning, okay? Third, it helps make learning rewarding. How? How do you think learning could be rewarding in an inquiry-based classroom? What kind of reward? Mm -hmm. Well, being able to reach a solution or a conclusion to a problem or a question is a reward itself, don't you think? Being able to see that something was achieved 
would make someone feel productive, I would think. How about you? Is that enough of a reward to learning? Mm -hmm. Fourth, it builds initiative and self-direction. So through the steps they are set to follow, the learners improve their skills and resourcefulness and self-reliance. Resourcefulness and self-reliance. Okay, so even if you started with a structured model of inquiry, as they get used to the process and their responsibilities or roles, right, slowly they build the skills on how they can manage their own learning. That's one beauty of inquiry-based learning. You don't need to um, guide them every time if they already got used to it. Lastly, it works in almost any classroom. It works in almost any classroom. I would believe so. Since it is basically the start of learning, right? Since we have questions, we want to be answered. So that's what we do. We pose a question in search for the answer to it. That is the start of learning. So, inquiry-based learning could work in any classroom, in any subject. There you go. Perhaps you might have your own realizations to add on these benefits by now, since we are nearly done with it. Now let's take a look at the other side of the coin. The challenges. Okay. So, no matter how ideal this type of learning is, we cannot avoid some practical downsides, like being time-consuming, messy, loud, and chaotic, and unpredictable. What could be time-consuming in this type of approach? What could be unpredictable? Why is it chaotic or messy? We have rules, right? Let's see. Time consuming. What could be time consuming here? On what things would you be spending much time in this approach? Well, due to the nature of this approach, I would think we cannot avoid spending much time on some parts, such as when we allow them to choose questions and resources that could take time, right? decision making and also in organizing their information also sometimes seeking for an answer takes a long time so perhaps a task would take you more than a class or a lesson for a day perhaps it will be long-term inquiry okay on the other challenge messy loud and chaotic I think this is a prominent problem to this approach, especially if learners are still learning the steps to it, right? If they are still trying to learn the process, okay, perhaps they couldn't um, follow your parameters or your rules. So as we put diverse students to work on a problem, some issues are sure to arise when it comes to putting together their ideas and coming to a conclusion. Or a bit clash, for sure. Lastly, it could be unpredictable. What is? What could be unpredictable in an inquiry-based classroom? Hmm? There could be a lot of things to not go as we want to, even if we set rules and plan it every step of the way. Some steps might still not be followed due to unforeseen barriers or problems that might happen. Okay. However, we should not be too deterred or discouraged with these problems since it can happen with other approaches as well, not only in inquiry-based um, approach. We should remember that no method is ever perfect. But 
we can still anticipate those problems, plan with our best, and implement with equal enthusiasm. Okay, so inquiry-based classroom has a lot of benefits. It also has some challenges to it. Well, it's up to us to reduce the level of these challenges okay, as we do our part, our role as a facilitator in an inquiry-based classroom. And as we teach our learners those processes and those rules, okay, and hopefully those challenges will be alleviated, will be reduced. Because we know it cannot be removed totally. There are two sides of the coin, right? And so that finally, finally ends our lengthy lecture on inquiry-based learning. Uh -huh. Perhaps you have questions in mind? And I hope through inquiry learning, you will be able to answer those questions. Okay, if you cannot answer it on your own, well, you're free to seek the help of your other teachers or your classmates. All right, so we managed to talk about a lot of things about this approach. So you can see here in our list from the definition of inquiry-based learning to the models of inquiry for we have the cycle of inquiry, which has five steps. We also have the eight types of questions. I hope you are not confused with how different they are from each other. Okay. Also, on this video, we talked about both the teacher as a facilitator's role in an inquiry-based classroom and also the learner's role, the student's role. Then we had the benefits and challenges of this approach. Okay, we managed to talk about a lot of things and I hope this lecture helped you establish knowledge on how essential it is, okay, on how essential it is and an idea on how to implement it in your classroom soon. Okay. Until next time, thank you and happy teaching.